Page 395, we'll do a little bit of Shulchan Ovech before we get to Rav Soloveitchik. We were talking about Tzitziot and Talitot, of the strings frayed, the Talit frayed. The question now that we have is what if you, what if the strings didn't rip, but you actually took them off? For example, Dan will introduce to you uh, at some point the Hatikva now carries Tchelet strings. And let's say you want to upgrade your Talit now. You want to get rid of those white strings and you want to put on blue strings. So the question is as follows. If I untie the strings, and I, have, I never want to use these again for a mitzvah, what status do those strings that I untied have? How do I have to treat them? Chutei tzitzit, the strings of the tzitzit, shehi tiram mi beged ha-talit, that I untied from the clothing of the talit. You're on Gimel. On Gimel, yes. Ve'en kavanato lishtamesh behem, and 395. And I, I don't have any more intention to use them l'shem mitzvah, for a mitzvah. I'm not going to tie them onto my other talit. It's not going to happen. Dinam, their status is kidin chutei tzitzit shnechtechu. They have the same status as any other string that ripped. It doesn't make a difference if you untied them or they ripped off. They still have a status, which means technically you could throw them away. Some would have a custom to, to avoid doing that directly. The question that follows, though, is let's say you buy the strings. You buy the strings. And now you saw, hey, I bought new white strings for my talit. But a tikva, they're selling tchelit. So I don't want to use these white ones anymore. I'm done. This is I'm past. What is the status of the white ones that you never even used before for a mitzvah? They're kosher. They're kosher, yes. I want to get rid of them. But I don't have any use for them. Every time I buy tchelit, it's going to come with white strings. You give them to somebody. Correct. So you could give... I'm not telling you practically what you should do with them, but what is the status? Can I throw them away? No. They weren't used for a mitzvah. But they can throw away new ones. They're brand brand new. They were rejected. They They were never used. They were just spun for... So they were... But they were made with the intention of being used for a mitzvah. Barry is dragging us into an argument. If (laughs) hazmana miltahu... If you designate something for a mitzvah, does it actually become... I'm going to use the word muktzeh. Set aside for that mitzvah or not? Most of the poskim say that hazmana, intending something on its own without an action, is not enough. So help me out here. When you intended these strings for a mitzvah, did you perform any action or not? You bought them. That's a... Okay, well, but that's not you, a, you tied them. You didn't, tie, you didn't put them on a talit yet. Oh, you're saying just the, the unfinished strings. Who made these tizio? Well, some they, they some factory that. somewhere. The, 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 the string. The string. They were spun. They have to remember. We learned yeah. that the strings have, to, have be to be spun lishma, for the sake of the mitzvah. Oh. At that point, that is both a hazmana. It's both a intention and an action towards the mitzvah. Then therefore, v'chen chutei tzitzit, strings of the tzitzit, shnitvu v'shnish zerun l'shem mitzvah tzitzit. They were spun and twisted, in for the mitzvah of tzitzit. Vadain lo nitanan babeged, but you still haven't tied them to any actual clothing. Oh, even a case shenitanan babeged that you put them on the clothing. Vadain lo lavshom olam, but you've never worn it yet. You were tied yourself a yom kippur talit, but you decided I'm not going to wear it this year. Dinam kidin chutei tzitzit shenichtechu. Their status is the same as the tzitzit that have been used for a mitzvah because they were already made into a mitzvah. Hamul el b'siv alef, just like we said above. V'yesh machmirim, and some are strict. What is being strict? What does it mean strict? Because before you said... Um, Ron says that you, you can just throw them away, and my mom said, well, maybe. How could it be that they would be holier than tzitzit you've used for a mitzvah before? Because they're brand new, the ones you're getting rid of because they're already used out, or they're torn, or something. But their status is lower than that of one that was used for a mitzvah. I think one of the mm. things that makes this a little more difficult is it's much more difficult to make old tzitzit pasul than his other things. Say it again? It's much more difficult to make old tzitzit pasul 
than it is other ritual objects. Why? In other words, even if it's really frayed, ragged, this this still it's useful. Still kosher. Right. Whereas you know, uh, it's easy to non kosher many other. To fill them, right? If you just yeah. have a uh, just have like a like messed up corner or something, you can you know, you can make it invalid, right? Tefillin have a lot more com right. Tefillin is much more complicated yeah. for Zabon Sitzit. That's what we're saying. I can say I don't understand. I don't understand. That's my, I don't know what other Khumra you would have on these. They don't have it on the Because we're more strict with this than with the other one? That's... Okay. 396. <coughs> I wonder if it's... just thought, can you, if you see, why is this one more strict? But let's say like a chauffeur was one of the examples you brought up. A chauffeur, you... Isn't quite as personal as like tzitzit. You're gonna get it. You're gonna put it on a piece of clothing, or you plan to. The shofar is made, and it's sold on the market. You could probably buy it from a non-Jew. It doesn't have as much attachment to the mitzvah. Like you can make a shofar just for show. Okay. It doesn't and have to be used for a mitzvah. And therefore. And it's still kosher. That's why it's called a shofar. <laughs> and then uh, so you're saying uh, regarding what they were saying about becoming pasul. Okay, <laughs> Chanel, by the way, I've seen many shofar that I bought, for example, from Arabs and old cities, and that they have cracks and th and they put a special kind of glue in them that you can't really your eye doesn't catch it until you look for it. And those shofar are pasul in there. You can't blow such a shofar that was cracked, that was had a hole, that was then filled up. And you have to imagine that this process of cutting off a hard horn from an animal, carving it out, slicing off the edges. The chances of them cracking are very, it happens a lot. And so uh, you have to be very careful. I don't recommend you buying a uh, shofar unless it comes from a reputable uh, store, a dealer, a person that has a hechshel on it. Chutei tzitzit. This is something where you know the strings of the tzitzit, we read this in Maran, he's just paraphrasing. Hakvuim betalit shemishtamesh, but that are attached to the talit that you're using. Yesh is a shemishtamesh behem. You should be careful not to use them. Afidu shimu sheino shel ganai. You shouldn't use the strings in your tzitzit that you're currently wearing, even for a non-disgraceful purpose. Kol shushimu shel chulim, any anything that is mundane, kagol nikshol behem. You shouldn't use them to tie anything. Mishum sheish b'zeh bizui hamitzvah because that is considered desecrating or degrading the mitzvah. Uh, what would be an example of that? Let's say you want to tie your keys to tzitzit. You're wearing a pant that doesn't have uh, belt loops. I don't know what it is. Okay, you know what? I'm going to tie my keys to my tzitzit. You're not... They're just strings, right? But they're not just strings. So long as you're using them for the mitzvah, you have to be careful with them. What about if I'm not wearing the tzitzit? Let's say it's, I took it off at night, and now I want to tie my car keys to it, so I make sure I don't forget them in the morning. I'm not wearing it now, so right? Well, maybe this is like tzitzit that were ripped. Oh, but Lala Shanoz Man Tzitzit, or maybe better, it's night time. So, night time is not even a time where Tzitzit is obligatory. Yesh Lachmir Bazaar, you should be careful and not do this. Now comes the Jewish mind. There's something called Hatna'a. You're making a Tnai. For example, this room. It's forbidden to eat inside of a Bitkas. Forbidden. The only people who are allowed to eat inside of a Bit Midrash are. <laughs> the person who spends more time in the Bed Midrash than they do outside of the Bed Midrash. We've stretched the definition today to what is a Talmud Chacham, even the students of the Talmud Chachamim that are coming to hear a class. Okay, that's pushing it, but it's... It's why we're always careful here in the like we do a Kiddush, we have a class during the Kiddush. It's important to make sure that that's not a... It doesn't become just a meal. But imagine, somebody once... I had a, a question, someone came up, someone like, can I rent the... Not this, can I rent a, a synagogue, a synagogue, for a bat mitzvah dance party? The answer is no. No. So how are we able to do all kinds of other events inside of the Bet Knesset? When we built the Bet Knesset, or we rented the Bet Knesset, or we bought a Bet Knesset, you bought it out tonight. I'm making a condition that this will not only be used for holy purposes. It will also be used for not disgraceful purposes, but it will be used for mundane Jewish purposes. Is that the root of the word Tanayim? 
Same well, tonight, yeah, the time you do at a wedding are conditions yeah. that you agreed upon before the marriage that will last into the marriage. So same thing we do here. We made it tonight. This room, we don't have a social hall attached to the Knesset yet. And therefore, this is also our social hall. And, and you'll see in the big Bet Knesset, for example, if you go to one of those big synagogues in Manhattan, <laughs> we have a huge uh, sanctuary and they have a huge social hall, sometimes even bigger than the sanctuary. They have these benches drilled into the ground and mm-hmm. then... They never break up that room and have a party in there. The things are always in the social hall. Any event is in the social hall. Even the Jewish ones are in the social hall. And that's the way the Knesset should operate. Most but the Knesset, though, don't have that kind of budget or that kind of, of building or structure to do such a thing. And therefore they build them out tonight. Even if he made it tonight, beforehand, that he wants to use the tzitziot and hatnai mo'il, it does not work, kol zman shemishtamesh betalit, so long as you're using the talit. V'chen en l'chalek b'zeh b'begad ha'asui mitzemer, shechev b'zeh 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 said somebody wants to maybe differentiate between a wool tzitzit, which according to the Torah is obligatory, and a cotton tzitzit, which is only rabbinic, so there's no room to make these differentiations, just leave it as it is, tzitzit is tzitzit. V'hu adin b'chol ha'in anal l'inan begad ha'talit. Shim yesh bo tzitziot u'mishtamesh bo l'shem ha-mitzvah eno reshay l'shtamesh bo afilu shemu sh'enu m'gune That even though the, which is the holier part of the talit, the tzitzit? The strings or the begit, the clothing? The strings. The strings. So maybe the talit, the actual part, maybe I could use my tzitzit to wipe my uh, hands or my forehead when after I'm playing basketball, or maybe I can. I've seen people do that, they, they take their tzitzit and they, like it's their washcloth or something. They'll throw it on the washing machine. <laughs> Your tzitzit is not an undershirt. This is, clo- this is a, a begot of Kedusha. No, so one should not do that. And if you take the strings off the corners, some say you can do that, and some say you cannot do that. In any case, There's a difference between your big talit and your talit katan, you wear under your clothing. You're allowed to use your tzitziot for the the clothing, not the strings, for something that is not degrading. Even though there are tzitziot on them. So what would be an example of something not degrading? One? Why would you have to do, do that? Let's give you an example. Let's say that I'm... Let's say I'm pushing my son to shul on Shabbat morning, and I see their son beating down at his head. So my tzitzit, maybe I'd be allowed to take it off and cover his stroller with it. It's not miguna. I'm not wiping my hands on it. I'm not just laying it on on something else. It could be that that would be allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, for the health of some other person. Okay, but it's, I'm not going for the health reasons. You can give me a different example. Uh, um, let's say that, let's say I'm cold. And I want to pull out my talit and wrap my hands inside because I forgot my gloves and I'm in New York and it's the middle of the winter. It's not a shimush megunet. It's not degrading to the tzitzit. They're just using it for a mundane purpose. And that would be allowed, technically. Mm. And then the last question that we have today. I have a talit. And my talit ripped. If a talit is holier than tzitzit, am I allowed to tear off the ripped part and make my big talit into a small tzitzit that I wear under my garment. I mean, can I cut it down this way and add two more corners, make a hole in the middle, and turn it into tzitzit? Technically, I'm stepping, I'm, I'm bringing it down a level. The answer is that it's still considered kedusha. It's not like you made it mundane. You made it just a different kind of holiness, and therefore that would be allowed. But I've never seen anybody in my life. Tuzit link today, Baruch Hashem, they're buying these things. It's very inexpensive, and. Uh, and and even if they are a little bit pricey, you don't. It's not something you buy every day. It's something you buy every week, and therefore, uh, in general, this is the way the market works. If people were to buy talitot every month, the price of talitot would go down. Why? Yeah. Let's Amen. give you an example. Men's strimals. I spoke to one of my uh, kind of, uh, nephews about this. His strimal. So you think this trimel costs so much money to make? You have to pay three to five grand for it. Three thousand for a hat. If there's a hat that doesn't even look nice. It's the middle of the summer in August. You're wearing a fur hat. 
the fur that some animals are very yeah, attractive. Yeah, sable. Yeah. Like but 30 tails or something. 30, 30 tails, tails, but it's not, it's not, it's not a crazy... It doesn't have to be $5,000. <laughs> but what happens, part of the price on anything in the market is they have to do the math. How yeah. often do people buy strangles? Supply and demand. Every few years they buy strangles. And therefore, I have to make off of one customer enough money to last me until the next time he comes through to buy his other strangle. So if people were to buy strangles as often as they would buy baseball caps, they'd pay the price perhaps more similar to a baseball cap. The same thing with Talitot. Uh, I don't know that we can we have a sim- hardly the way to check, but it's not. What I'm telling you is the other way around. Because you don't buy a Talit so often, buy a nice Talit when you buy a Talit. Don't buy some plastic uh, cheap Talit. Buy a real Talit that you're going you're gonna to wear for a few years anyways, no? So invest in something. How could you come to the classes with a nice shirt, a nice pants, maybe a nice suit even, that you spend more money on than the talit that you're wearing for the Bush Bukhu? It's always a big question for me. I see the guys with the brand name suit and this like neck talit they picked up at a... $200 uh, jeans. <laughs> $200 jeans and they're wearing a, a talit they bought on Scarf. eBay for $3. You know, this is a, that's, that's what you do with your mitzvah. Hashem should guide us on the right path in these kind of things.